Look at it. Look how tender it's gonna be. It's going down. I'm about to make a delicious roast today. This is my roast to slice the pan. These are the seasonings I'm gonna use. This is the vegetables I'm gonna put in it. I'm gonna add water to it in the back. In the back over here, these are the Trinity seasoning: celery, bell pepper, onion. That's the Trinity. That's the foundation. At least that's what my mama told me. So I'm about to make this roast. What's going on, everybody? It's your buddy Putty, and I'm back in the kitchen again. The host with the most on the west coast and I'm about to make a roast. Today is a very, very, very special day. Today is Mother's Day. And what special way to show appreciation to your mother than to cook for her? You know, food is a way that you spread love. So I'm spreading love to the moms by making moms a roast. And this is something that my mom has taught me. She calls it the Trinity seasoning. Whenever she makes something, she put in celery, bell pepper, and onion. That's the Trinity seasoning. Celery, bell, pepper, onion. Celery, bell, pepper, onion. I don't know what's wrong with me. It's Mother's Day, I'm happy. So I'm gonna put in the onion. The bell pepper, sprinkle it all around in here, and put in the celery, sprinkle it all the way around. Alright, and now I'm going to add my stuff over here the broccoli, and then I'm going to add my tomato. I'm like, what is he doing putting all this stuff in this roast? Y'all see. There we go. Throw that up in there. Oh, it's going down. And I'm using a potato pillar to get the carrots off. My potato. Potato, potato. You know how people put potatoes inside the um, roast? I'm going to put plantain in mine. Plantain is the potato of the Caribbean and the potato of West Africa. I like to do my dishes unique. I probably ain't seen nobody do this before, but I'm doing it. And it's gonna be bad. This is how you peel the plantain. When it's super, super ripe, you don't have to peel it like this. It comes off like a banana. And this is the banana's cousin. Our relative depending on what you're claiming. <laughs> Peace to all the homies banging. <laughs> Think of a rapper again. It's me, the SOS to the T to the E to the N. Or call me YVP. Your buddy, putty, that's me. They love the way I rip and rock it on the MIC. A gentleman, I'm a G. Alright. So we get our plantain and we just cut up our plantain again. Wherever we feel like it. Just cut them up. And this is our starch. We have our meat. We have our vegetables. And now we have our starch. A balanced meal all in one deal. Now the first plantain, it was kind of hard to peel. This one should be easier because it's more ripe. See how easy it peels? You basically do it with your hand. It peels right off. Just to show you variety. Variety being the spice of life. Let me see if I can make a basket over the camera. One. Yeah, yeah! <laughs> Cut the soft plantain in it. The difference between the two, the soft one is sweet, and the, the one is not soft, then it just tastes like a more and more potato-ish. That's what it's about. It's about flavor. It's about learning different things and coming up with your own invention when you cook. And while this is going, I should have the stove on. So bake 
and I'm going to set the stove to 350. That's something my mom told me when I was a kid. She'd come home from work tired. she cooked for me and my brother. You know, she was a single parent. She would tell me, so stand. That's my real name, so stand. Set the stove to 350 for me. She would go in the room, take off her work clothes, put on her everyday clothes. And then the stove would be set to 350. And she would come in here and cook. So that's what I do whenever I cook. The stove is always set to 350. And then I, I let it cook for a while. And then I determine if I need to turn the knob up or down, depending on how much heat that I need. If I want something to cook slower and make it like real tender, I turn the heat on low. So right now, 350, that's like my, my starting point. That's what my mama said. So I'm gonna add garlic powder. Sprinkle garlic powder all in there. Garlic powder is what's gonna give it that taste. Y'all not know it. Y'all not know it. Whoa. Now our onion powder. I hate when the bottom of the seasoning gets stuck. Does that happen to anyone else? I hate it. You gotta hit it, shake them up, and loosen them up a little bit. Damn, I hate when that happens. So, there we go. Now we're in the game. That's our onion powder. Then I'm gonna add some parsley and garlic salt. Yeah, boy. We have our seasoning salt. Then I'm going to add some paprika or paprika. Hey, why did you say paprika? But you know what? You so corny. Some paprika. And then I'm going to add liquid smoke. It's gonna give it a taste. They're gonna wonder, like, where did this taste come from? It's that liquid smoke being cooked in it. We're gonna have some seasoned pepper seasoning. I'm putting all type of stuff in here. <laughs> Y'all don't know. Y'all don't know. And I'm gonna have some steak seasoning. Then some cayenne pepper, just to give it a little kick. You don't want the seeds to fall in because seeds taste nasty. I don't know if you ever bit into a seed by accident, a lemon seed or any type of seed. Seeds are nasty. So we don't want that to happen. So we're going to utilize the net. Right, my food blog is gumbopotmedia.com. So I'm taking pictures for the vlog. So then I'm going to pour some water into it. The water is going to make juice. It's going to mix in with all the stuff in the meat and the vegetables and all the seasoning. It's going to make like a good juice, like a gravy. If I want to add gravy, I could put flour in it. And I might add flour in it later if I want to make it gravy-ish, depending on how it looks once I take it out. Like, see it, here it go. <laughs> so now we grab our top. Put the top on top. And put it inside the oven. We're just going to let this do its thing. I'm going to come back and check on it in an hour. Alright, see you on the view. So it's been about an hour, so it's time to check on our roast and see where it's at. Our Mother's Day Roast. From the host with the most on the West Coast. And that's me. <laughs> YDP, of course. 
<laughs> Wait till y'all get a look at this. I'm just mixing everything down so it's submerged inside of the water. So we don't want it to be at the top and then the heat makes it dry out. We want everything to have flavor and be full of all that good juice. Like right now it's kind of watery, but that's okay. Because at the end, I can add flour to it to make it a gravy. Or otherwise, I'll just leave it in here. The top off, it cooks the water down. Or the leftover water that's in here after I get done making it, I put it in a separate container and I put it over my dog food. And Kelly Hayes loves it. You know, you gotta be good to the animals. Look at it. Look at the Mother's Day roast. It's so succulent and juicy in here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Look at it, how tender it's gonna be. See the steam coming off? Fresh off the stove. Mm -hmm. And moms are very, very, very special. You know, that's like your queen. That's your. You don't have nobody else you can go to your mama. A lot of people, they don't have their mom anymore. I want you to celebrate by having good memories. Remember all the lessons that you have been taught. And that's how you give appreciation to your mom.